right, everyone. Hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. I usually upload videos every week uh, that are covering various topics of Norse heathenry. Um, got a couple of series types uh, playlists down there in the playlist section. If you go down there, check it out. We got a, a deity discussion series. I've got a Broggy's Corner kind of storytelling series. There's a Hubble discussion series that I did uh, last year. And uh, so definitely check all that stuff out if you're into Norse heathenry specifically, uh, some of the Norse uh, lore, mythology, that sort of thing. Uh, if you like that sort of stuff, please give this uh, channel a subscribe. And if you don't want to miss anything, click bell notifications so that way you're notified every time I upload new content. Uh, so today's discussion is going to be one that I feel I'm kind of venturing out onto a limb with. Um, and uh, this is going to be a lot of my own personal views, which is... Um, I'll, you know, I try to incorporate some historical stuff on a lot of the discussions here, but there are some certain things um, that I'm just going to come out here and just be blatantly honest with you and say, this is very much my view on things. This is not to be, meant to be a representation of the heathen worldview at, at, at a whole or as a whole. Um, so keep that in mind as you watch my content. Uh, realize that what I'm pulling from is some uh, historical stuff, but I also have my own views on things and we're not always going to agree, and that's totally fine. I have no problem with that. Um, but anyways, today's discussion is about honoring our roots, and uh, what I see as some of the struggles or misconceptions or things that um, can cause problems with regards to folkish heathenry specifically. So before we get started, we always like to light some incense and a candle, and that is kind of a tradition here on the channel, so we will go ahead and get those two items out of the way, and then we will go ahead and get into this discussion for the week. All right. All right, everyone. So um, if you're new to the, the channel or if you're new to heathenry in general and you're not exactly sure what we're talking about when I say folkish heathenry, um, what, what that is is, you know, it's a form of... of heathen practice uh, that generally speaking people who are folkish um, very much and very heavily believe that you have to have some sort of lineage some sort of blood connection to uh, you know any sort of Germanic or Scandinavian uh, countries um, in order to venerate or worship the Germanic or Norse gods um, so it's not a very inclusive form of heathenry um, it is it is something that is a bit exclusive and unfortunately uh, tends to draw uh, the crowds or the types of people who display racist tendencies or racist ideologies um, whether they be white nationalists white supremacists white separatists um, people who feel that the white race is superior in ways than the other races and that um, you know not all folkish heathens are racist but you will notice that a lot of racists um, or I notice anyway that a lot of racists tend to lean more towards the folkish heathenry model um, so why do we title why have I titled the video honoring our roots um, I firmly believe that that is very important for us to do as heathens because um, you know, the way I see heathenry and the way I think a lot of other folks who I've talked to see heathenry, the, the kind of con construct of this, this, uh, this faith, or this, you know, if you want to call it a religion, um, this folk way, if you will, that this path, uh, is very, very, you know, ancestor veneration is very important. Um, we have, in a sense, sort of deified our, our close ancestors and work with them. Uh, and their uh, their spirits um, with us in our rituals and things like that. They, they're very much a part of our lives, um, as much or more so than the gods even sometimes, because our ancestors are very closely tied to us, and therefore they, uh, they have a more uh, vested interest in the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, whereas I feel like the gods um, are there, um, but not really so much intricately interested in the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, so honoring our roots... Um, and, and going back to what I say and, and how I see heathenry and how some other 
folks see heathenry, is that it's like a tree. Um, and a tree uh, takes time to build strength and longevity. Um, it doesn't grow into a great tree overnight. It takes time. Um, and one of the things that is important about a, a, you know, growing a, a good, strong tree is that it has to have strong roots. Um, there has to be a good, strong, deep root uh, that strengthens and nurtures the tree to grow into what it is to become. You know, so our roots and knowing our roots, knowing where we come from, knowing where things that we're doing came from, having that knowledge, having that awareness is definitely important because if we're not honoring our roots and if we're not tending to those roots, as if you were to, let's say, water and nurture a tree as it grows, if you're not watering it and feeding it, um, the roots won't take. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll be a shallow, uh, weak tree. It won't grow strong. Um, and it won't, you know, it, it, when, when heavy winds and rain and, and tempests and things come around in that tree's life, um, it'll, it'll be destroyed very easily. Um, so you have to tend to those roots, you have to nurture those roots, you have to know and have a good understanding of your roots for us to grow as heathens, I feel. Now, the, the kind of the caveat to that is that you can't be so dedicated to the roots, you can't be so root-bound that you um, don't allow for growth to take place. A tree that becomes so root-bound isn't going to, it's, it's going to be maintained stagnant, it's going to just be a gnarly mess that cannot grow, you know? There's no room for growth if you're so root-bound. Um, a beautiful tree has a strong root system, a good trunk, a good base, and a beautiful and flourishing array of limbs and branches. Um, and that's the way I see it as heathenry. Uh, at, its, at its best, it is rooted and, and strength in its roots, um, but also has a good, strong foundation to allow for growth upward and outward um, that's not so stuck and dedicated on the roots. And that's where I kind of see the fault or the, or, the, or the issue, I guess, I have with, with folkish heathenry is that, you know, they're so, it tends to be so stuck on the roots and it tends to be so stuck on trying to reconstruct or revisit, um, you know, a, an ancient folkway that died out thousands of years ago. They're, you know, taking from the old ways, taking from ancient ancestors, uh, how things were done, what little we can find. Um, we have to be able to apply that to us now in, in modern times because we're not the same people that our ancestors were. We're not in the same time, you know. Um, and when it comes to this whole thing of like how you know folkish heathens look at, you have to have you know blood lineage uh, with Norse and or Germanic or Scandinavian uh, ties. Um, in order to be able to, to venerate or worship the God. I see that as, as being a big problem, okay? But just to be frank and to be honest. Um, because, you know, culture and ethnicity are constructs that have no relation to genetics, you know? Because cultures and ethnicities are expressions that are, that are, that are made manifest at that given time, right? You know, so the culture of... Scandinavia a thousand years ago is different from the culture of Scandinavia now, just like the culture of the United States or of America is different now than it was, you know, 300 years ago, whatever, when it was, you know, first starting to become its own nation and this and that. Um, culture changes, you know. Um, you can't inherit an ancient culture based on your genetics. Um, and you especially can't inherit an ancient culture um, that doesn't even exist anymore, you know, um, there is no inherited heathenry, you know what I mean, like we can't say that we've, because of our uh, genetics that we've inherited this, it's, it's, it is not native to anyone, heathenry in itself, you know, because if you want to look at it, uh, a pagan uh, path or, or a polytheistic belief, um, it's, you, we see that in cultures all over the world, not just Scandinavia, not just you know, uh, you know, proto-European uh, countries, but not just in, you know, uh, 
Celtic countries and, and, and all these different areas where we see it very popular. There, there's polytheistic religions that have seen and touched all different cultures all over the world, all, you know, all throughout history. Um, and I don't see any historical evidence that would suggest that heathens believed in religion being passed through bloodline. I, you know, I, I don't think there's anything that can argue or confirm that to be true. Um, they adopted elements and gods from other religions. Um, we see that throughout history. Uh, we see sort of the, um, the evolution of the gods um, in lore and, and in different parts of, you know, uh, proto-European or Indo-European countries. Proto-Germanic leading up to Old Norse, um, you know, the Old Norse culture leading up to, you know, uh, Germanic tribes and stuff separating throughout the regions, this and that. Um, so we see the evolution of gods that started somewhere at some point and then grew and evolved into other things, you know, so they didn't have a concept. Uh, heathens, anyway, our, our, our heathen ancestors didn't have a concept of what I believe folkish heathens look to as like some, some sort of cultural purity. You know, um, you, you're, we're not practicing or reviving the old religion when, when you do that. If you're, if you're so stuck on this, uh, the, this concept of you got to have blood ties to, you know, Northern Europe or whatever to be able to worship the gods of those pantheons, if you feel that way, you're not worshiping uh, or reviving or practicing uh, an old religion with those guys, you're essentially worshiping your own race because you feel that that's the most important thing or that it has such an importance to you, the veneration of those gods that it becomes a, becomes a god in and of itself. Um, and then through the inability to see the differences, okay, the, 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 the inability to see the difference between uh, honoring a culture and honoring a race um, what you're doing is, you know, you're, you're twisting ancient religions, ancient but faith ways, folk ways, pathways, whatever we want to call them, um, into, a new, into a newer religion of, of race worship, you know? You're killing that cultural heritage. You're not, you're not, you're not reviving anything. You're not preserving anything. You're, you're creating something totally new because, as I said before, there's no historical evidence that... Per proves or, or shows that there was any concept of cultural purity you know cultural heritage is not racial heritage it's it's just just not you know so we can call folkish heathenry what it is which unfortunately rears its ugly head in racial racially driven uh, separatist um, organizations, you know, whether they be white separatists, white nationalists, fascists, fascism, and things like that, um, you know, people who are not appropriating Old Norse elements, but are simply just white separatists or white supremacists in some way, and using those aesthetics to further their ideals. I do not, for one, believe that all folkish heathens or all, anybody who is folkish, uh, and, and their heathen practices are are racist. Um, we just don't see that many racist folks getting into universalist heathenry, um, even the whole you know tribal heathenry, uh, which is kind of more or less what I lean more towards. You know, I'm very I'm very accepting of, of folks, and I don't believe that you have to have any racial uh, uh, connection. To a, to a region to be able to worship the gods or, or, or get into this sort of thing. Um, but I do believe that tribe is important and that it has its, that, that is where heathenry shines, is, is on the tribal level and at the kindred level, you know. So I don't want this to be people thinking that I think all folkish heathens are racist. That is not at all the, the, the case. I just see some of the elements of folkish heathenry as being catalysts to give people that have those racist ideas to attach to that mentality and to further it. Um, so it, I think it's something that we have to be very aware, aware of as heathens nowadays and, and watch out for those 
types of people that would want to do harm to others or to think that they are racially superior um, and, and try to ride the coattails of heathenry or use the, the sanctity uh, such as it is of heathenry to further those messed up ways of thinking. You know, so um, honor our roots. Honoring our roots um, has nothing to do with being uh, racially driven. It's, it's about culture. Um, and culture has changed over time and will continue to change. Our culture will not be the same 100 years from now as it is today. And just as our culture wasn't the same 100 years ago and beyond as it is today, things constantly change and things constantly evolve. Um, so my cautionary words would be to be aware of the, the importance of honoring your roots, but don't be so stuck in the roots that you are root bound and have no room for growth. Allow the roots to strengthen your, your base and then from there, from that base, continue to grow, you know, continue to grow upwards and outwards. You can't grow so far out and you can't be so far out in left field or, or you can, your branches can't be so stretched out that they become weak and thin and then rain and wind and everything break them off and then they're, they're, they're dead and gone and no longer a part of the tree. All right, you know, so there is, there's a fine line between both. You know, you can be so root bound and you can be so all willy nilly about it that, you know, you're not even on the same tree anymore. You're just trying to grow off into your own thing. You have to stay connected to the tree, stay connected to the roots, but allow for growth. So anyways, guys, that is my uh, views on what I think it means to honor our roots and where I see some of the issue or misconceptions within focus heathenry. You know, don't think that just because someone says they're focus that they're going to be racist. Talk to these people. Get to know. Get to understand. Educate. We all can learn different things. Um, and so let me know, guys. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of folks out here that uh, may disagree with what I have to say. Maybe you're watching this and you lean more towards the folkish model of heathen yourself. Let me know down in the comments. I'm always wel welcoming you know, uh, commentary from viewers and subscribers in here. If you like what I do on this channel, your subscription to the channel is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to Click the bell for notifications so that way you are notified every time I upload new content. And then also don't forget, earlier today, uh, Eric Shervin and I, uh, Eric Shervin from The Raven's Call, you know, uh, we did a collaboration video about Ostra, and if you hadn't seen that video yet, uh, there'll be a, an annotated card um, up in the top right corner of this video, as well as uh, some end screen uh, videos that you can click on, one of which will be that. And check that out, let us know what you think of that. Go ahead over to... Eric's channel and subscribe. Uh, show your support for him over there. He's doing great things um, from his end. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. Really appreciate your support. Hail, and I will see you all in next week's video.